Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, so this is my video that I have promised. Oops. Aw. Hey boo boo. I'll get back to you. That is one of my really good um military life friends. But anyways, um back to what this video is about. <laughs> Um, this is going to be my story, my experience and everything about my three hour glucose test for gestational diabetes. So giving you a little bit of my background, I am the youngest of five kids. Um, my mom had gestational diabetes with all five of us. And then after she had me, her gestational diabetes turned into type two diabetes. So she kept it and she still has it to this day. If you know anybody who has diabetes, it's not an easy thing. Like you have to constantly monitor it, constantly be on top of it, watching your diet, this, that, that, and that. And that's a concern, obviously, since I have like a genetic predisposition to have it because my mom had it. Ooh, he's my, y'all, that, no, it never happened. Anyways, <laughs> um, so that's kind of that thing going on there. So I already had the higher risk of having it because of my mom. So with my first pregnancy, I took the one hour test with Devin, passed it with flying colors, great, didn't have it. That was a blessing, thank Jesus. So I was okay. Um, and then with this pregnancy, there was a little bit more of concern. I'm sure a lot of you know by now that twins are a high risk pregnancy and my twins, my boys are, are fraternal twins. So they are in two separate sacs, two separate placentas. And what that means for me is that I have twice as many hormones as a single twin pregnancy or a pregnancy with one baby. So basically what happens is that you take your glucose test sometime between like 24 to like 28 maybe 30 weeks at the most. You take your um, glucose test to see if your body is um, not responding or not keeping the insulin. So since I have two of them with twice as many hormones, I'm higher to be resistant to it. So basically when I took my one hour test, I did not pass it. <laughs> um, I had a 153. She wanted me to be at a 135. So what she explained to me is that it's not terrible. They're not going to automatically say you have gestational diabetes, blah, 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 blah. No. So what they did is that they scheduled me to take the three hour test. And for anybody who doesn't know how this test works, I didn't know until I had to go and take it. So what happens is that you go in to the lab, whatever, you will get stuck a total of four times. The first time is that they stick your arm and they have to check and see what your glucose level is, whether it's low enough for you to even take the test or not. So once that clears, you have to drink the sugary drink. Now, the sugary drink that you have this time is twice as sweet as it is for the first test. So the first one is 50, this one is 100. I think it's what they're measuring in there is the um, detexerose, whatever. Basically it's some form of sugar, like glucose that they can measure in your blood, blah, blah, blah. Not getting into the science part of it all. But um, yeah, so that is what you have to do. They give you five minutes to drink the bottle total. And then every hour for the next three hours, you come back in and they draw your blood again. Fun to the first hour, the second hour, the third hour, and then you're finished. So that I wasn't really excited about was having to be stuck four times. And actually I got stuck four times in the exact same vein, just in a different place. So they might like move down a little bit, move up a little bit, but same vein, but what else? It had to be done. So I was just like, okay, sure. Now, I actually had to go and take this test twice because I didn't do so well the first time. The first time that I went was September 5th, which was a Tuesday. That was a Tuesday after Labor Day. So, um, 
My husband had just come home from helping with the Hurricane Harvey relief and everything, so he was able to go with me. I was so beyond nervous because I'd never failed a glucose test before. So it really scared me and made me really concerned knowing everything that my mom has had and has been going through till this day. And I didn't want to have that for myself. And I didn't want that to be a risk of being able to contract it, like keeping it for the rest of my life like she did. So I was really scared. Um, I was nervous. So what we do is that I went, brought my paper, registered, and then I went to the lab. Well, when I got there, they took my blood. Great. Glucose level was fine. I was able to take the test. Then I took the drink and I did it kind of how I normally do for like the first glucose test. I chug the thing down rather than like taking it sparingly and uh, I could instantly like feel it in my system the babies could feel it like they were angry they were moving they weren't comfortable and they couldn't be comfortable and I couldn't be comfortable and then another symptom that I had is that I got really really hot like I had hot flashes and then I also had nausea on top of it so they're angry they're moving around like I'm feeling hot it's already hot outside because I live in New Orleans and the nausea on top of it I was just miserable and they're like okay well we'll see you in one hour to get your blood drawn for the first hour I'm like okay fine well my husband he wasn't trying to be insensitive he asked me if I was okay with this but he was do you mind if I go and get something to eat because in case you don't know for the gestational diabetes test you're supposed to fast for it especially for the three hour one so after I'd eaten dinner or my snack whatever that night I hadn't eaten anything throughout the night obviously nor that morning the only thing that I did was drink some water because I know with my pregnancy some of my symptoms is that I do get overheated easily and I do get dehydrated easily so I'm always having to pump fluids um so I had them this morning while you take the test you cannot eat or drink anything until the duration of the test is over so for the next three hours, I couldn't drink anything. I couldn't eat anything. So we went, we got him breakfast, like at a drive through and then we came back to the hospital. I was overwhelmingly hot. Like it was terrible. I had my face like in the AC vent of the car, just trying to cool off, trying to deal with everything. Oh, excuse me. I had just finished eating, so I'm like, oops, sorry. Um, but the babies are happy. They're eating tea. Yay. <laughs> but, um, so moving on, we go back in for me to get my blood drawn for the first hour. And the phlebotomist asked me, like, oh, how you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Well, she was eating this banana flavored candy. I will never forget this. It smelled overwhelmingly sweet that I just took the trash can and I just threw up everything which was basically the beverage like that you had to drink and that's it and um I asked her afterwards like what we had to do now because obviously that happened well first they had to cool me off because I actually turned red because I was so hot they put ice packs on my chest they put ice packs on my neck waited till I calmed down and then they explained to me that I would have to come and take it again obviously it can't be done during the same day so I had to go sometime that week. I picked going on Friday, which was September 8th. And the night before, I made sure that I ate everything that I wanted to till a little bit later. I think I stopped eating around like 10 o'clock-ish, something like that. So I know that I wouldn't be hungry and I made sure that I drank a lot, a lot of water. So that way I would be hydrated, I'd be okay, I'd be able to get through this test and also at that point, I was really praying that I was going to go through this test, be okay, like, that I'll pass it. I'm like, God, I did this my way. I didn't do very well, so I need your help. I need you to help me get through this. So the next morning, um, my husband went to the church to help them, like, finish unpacking. I brought Devin to school, and then I just went straight to the lab after that. Well, the weather was gorgeous outside. It was, like, 
70 degrees, cool breeze the entire time. So that played in me feeling great. That's my favorite kind of weather and I wasn't hot and muggy, miserable, gross. And then I felt really confident after praying the night before and that morning. Um, and I did drink some water before I went to go and take the test. Like as I said, once you start it, you can't eat or drink anything. So I made sure I was hydrated, I was pacing myself, everything was great. So I came back in, did the same thing, got the prick, my um, level was good. I started the test. First thing I did was that I didn't chug it. I drank it over the five minutes. I didn't take five minutes to drink the entire thing, but sipping it rather than just gulping it down helped me so much and it helped the babies. The babies were able to tolerate it and I was able to tolerate it a lot better. So there we go. That was okay. Countdown through the first hour. I did feel warm, but that's not unusual. Like I'm feeling warm right now because I'm sitting by a window. So something as simple as that can affect whether I feel warm or not. So I was okay. I could deal with it. And I had really great friends who were texting me, checking on me, like keeping me distracted, helping me get through this test. Well, here it came to be, hour one was done. I went in, drew my blood. Okay, then I waited for the second hour. The second hour I found to be the fastest. It went by like nothing. The only thing that was really different in that change is that I became really, really sleepy. All I wanted to do was take a nap. <laughs> But luckily, I had a magazine with me, so I was reading that, like looking at articles, um, looking at the upcoming family stuff to do. Um, my friends were texting me, and then I had made some friends in the waiting room because I never stopped talking. <laughs> so that really helped me. Hour two, done. I went in, they drew my blood, I was ready to go. So last hour, I started becoming antsy. I was becoming anxious. Like all I want, I was starting to get hungry. So I'm like, all I want to do is eat. I really, really, really wanted some water and I was sleepy. So that seemed to make it go by a little bit longer, but honestly it was bearable. And I had really great people who helped distract me to help get me through it. And before I knew it, I walked in, but like, okay, this is the last one. They drew my blood. They checked to make sure that I was okay so that nothing happened like it did the first time. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get something to eat. I'm going to drink the biggest glass of water that I can find in my house. <laughs> and that was it. I was able to go home. Once I got home, I fixed myself something to eat. I drank like three cups of water and I ended up taking a nap before I went to go and pick up Devin because I was feeling exhausted. Now what that feeling of sleepiness is that they told me is that your body just got this huge sugar rush from that drink and you're crashing. Your body's coming down off of that high and that is what I was experiencing, which is also something that is normal. So once I ate, I, it made me feel better. Like I balanced out and then I had my drink. So of course I was loving that because I really needed it and then my nap was glorious I felt like I had slept like for forever and I wanted to keep sleeping but obviously I had to wake up and go and get her so my husband basically once we got home kind of like took care of her the rest of the night that way I could rest but that is basically my experience of what happened and it wasn't the best experience in my life but I am grateful that I was able to get through it. Like, it was great. And good news is that I checked my labs on my, um, oh, excuse me. Can y'all chill for a minute? Sorry. <laughs> I talk to them like that all the time. And people just laugh at me, especially when I was working. My coworkers laughed at me too because I'll be like, look here, y'all need to stop it. And they thought I was talking to them. I'm like, no, I'm talking to these two. They're like, you can't fuss at babies. I'm like, Psh, watch me. They go and learn that mama rules. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, that's basically it. That's kind of what I went through. And my test results are that I passed. Yay! 
So thank God I do not have gestational diabetes and I am so thankful for that because uh, that would have led to a whole spinoff of problems and things. So that is my experience and if you'll have any questions about particulars more in detail or anything I don't think that I left much out or no I don't think so but what else and if there's anything else that you want to know or that you want me to clarify or share with y'all then go ahead and comment below and tomorrow I'm going to fill my bump date for this week because I have my doctor's appointment and I will be sharing my embarrassing pregnancy symptoms via request of a viewer so look out for that and y'all have a great rest of your day bye